So what I'm going to do here is give you a very specific example where two people or two countries will engage in trade um, and how they can benefit from specialization in trade because this seems to be um, one of the problems that most students have trouble figuring out. So let's say we have two countries that produce um, or have production capabilities of producing two different types of goods. We'll say it's Canada and Mexico. And let's say Canada and Mexico both have the capability of producing both apples and oranges. So I can put that information in a table to see what their production capability is. If they, it, let's say Canada devotes all of its resources just to apple production. Canada would be able to produce 20 apples, let's say. Yet if they allocate all of their resources to orange production, let's say they can produce 15 oranges. And then we look at the same information for Mexico. If Mexico only produces apples, let's say they can produce 25 apples. If they only produce oranges, let's say they can produce 10 oranges. And so from this data, what we can actually construct is each country's production possibility curve. So, you know, your production possibility curve is going to look something like this. So we can draw a production possibility curve for both Canada and Mexico. So we'll say this one is for Canada and this one is for Mexico. All right, and so each axis has to be one or the other, so apple, oranges, apples, oranges. And let's say, again, if Canada's just producing apples, they can produce 20 apples, so we'll just say that's right there. And if they only produce oranges, they can produce 15 oranges, so let's say that's right there. All we have to do is connect those dots. That would be Canada's production possibility curve. And then we do the same thing for Mexico. If Mexico only produces apples, it would be right here. If they only produce oranges, it'd be 10 right here. And we connect those dots, and now we've constructed Mexico's production possibility curve. Now, let's say this was just production for one day, but I was actually asking you to graph their production capability for a week. Well, then you would just be taking the numbers up here in the table, and you would just be multiplying them by 7. So rather than plotting your point at 20 here on the axis, you would be plotting it at 140, 20 times 7. So when you're doing a problem where you're being asked to graph a production possibility curve, make sure you read the problem carefully so you know the parameters in which you know the production is taking place but in this case I'm just wanting to graph their production per day so these production possibility curves are just fine now let's say that right now Canada and Mexico don't specialize in the production of one crop over another they both devote equal resources to the production of apples and oranges then that would mean that they're probably producing right here in the middle of their production possibility curve so in other words that would would mean Canada's producing 10 apples and they're producing seven and a half oranges and then Mexico would be in the middle of their production possibility curve and they would be producing 12 and a half apples and they'd be producing five oranges right because remember this production possibility curve illustrates the maximum quantity of output that they can produce so they can produce at any point along that curve and if they're devoting equal resources to both then they're going to just be there right there in the middle so with no specialization we see that Canada ends up producing a total of 17.5 pieces of fruit and with no specialization Mexico produces 17 and a half pieces of fruit. So the total production with no specialization is 35. There's 35 pieces of fruit that are produced overall with no specialization. That's the key. We're looking to see what the total output is when there's no specialization. And so again, what we're trying to figure out is if these countries specialize where their opportunity costs are lowest, can they produce more output overall? So this is where we have to calculate the opportunity cost for each country. Remember, opportunity costs are not your production capability. It's what you give up in order to produce a particular good. So let's calculate production or opportunity costs for apple production first. So for apples. So for Canada, according to our table, it says that every time Canada produces 20 apples, it gives up 15 oranges. So let's write this information down. Every time it produces 20 apples, they give up 15 oranges. But we want to know what do they give up, and so again, this is the opportunity cost. 
we want to know what they give up when they just produce one apple so that we can compare what Mexico gives up when they produce one apple and then we can see does somebody give up less does somebody have a lower opportunity cost so all we have to do is divide this by itself to make it one so now for every one apple that Canada produces and of course if we divide this side by 20 we have to divide this side by 20 and 15 divided by 20 is going to reduce down to 3 fourths so now we can see that the opportunity cost for every one apple that Canada produces is three-fourths of an orange. And now we can do the same thing for Mexico. We can look at what, calculate what Mexico's opportunity costs are. We see that every time Mexico produces 25 apples, they're giving up 10 oranges. So again, we want to reduce that down, divide it by itself to make it 1. If we divide this side by 25, we divide this side by 25. So 10 divided by 25 is going to be 2 fifths. So now we see that for every one apple that Mexico produces, they give up 2 fifths of an orange. So now we can compare who gives up less. Canada gives up three-fourths of an orange. Uh, Mexico gives up two-fifths of an orange. Well, we can see very clearly that two-fifths is less than three-fourths. Therefore, Mexico has the comparative advantage in the production of apples because they give up less, right? So if these two countries were to specialize, Mexico would be the one to produce apples. Okay, now another thing that we can see from this is, again, their production capability, so what they would need to get in order to trade. In other words, if Mexico gives up two-fifths of an orange for every apple that it produces, what that means is Mexico can either produce one apple or two-fifths of an orange. Therefore, if Mexico is going to trade with Canada apples for oranges, they would need to get more, more than two-fifths of an orange for every one apple that they trade with Canada because they have to be made better off. There always have to be gains from trade. In other words, Mexico wouldn't trade Canada for only two-fifths of an orange because they can already produce the two-fifths of an orange themselves. So for every one apple that Mexico produces and trades, it has to get more than two-fifths of an orange. All right, now we can calculate the uh, 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 opportunity costs for orange production also. So we do the same thing. So for Canada, going back and looking, for every 15 oranges they produce, they give up 20 apples. So 15, oops, 15 oranges, they give up 20 apples. We do the same thing, divide this side by 15, divide this side by 15. So now we know for every one orange that they produce, they're giving up one and one third of an apple once we reduce that down. So that is their opportunity cost. For every one orange Canada produces, they give up one and one third of an apple. Then we do the same thing for Mexico. For Mexico, when we go back and look at the data, for every 10 oranges Mexico produces, they give up 25 apples. So every 10 oranges, they give up 25 apples. So divide this side by 10, divide this side by 10. So now we see that for every one orange that Mexico produces, they're giving up two and a half apples. Again, once we do that math out, we see that 25 divided by 10 reduces down to 2.5. So we can clearly see that Canada has the comparative advantage in orange production because they only have to give up one and one-thirds of an apple, whereas Mexico has to give up two and a half apples. So because Canada gives up less, Canada has the comparative advantage in orange production. So now that we 
can see that comparative advantage exists, we know that these two parties can benefit from specializing and trading with each other. So again, let's just put the data in another table so we can look at it again. So Canada and Mexico. Producing both apples and oranges. And so this is what we look at. So we already said that Mexico would have the comparative advantage in the production of apples. So that would mean that they would only produce apples. So this is what they would end up producing and they would produce no oranges. And Canada had the comparative advantage in the production of oranges. So it would only produce oranges and it would not produce apples. So we can look and see what's the total amount of fruit that is produced. 25 apples would be produced plus 15 oranges. So a total of 40 pieces of fruit would be produced when there is specialization. And then on the previous slide, we already saw that only 37 and a half pieces of fruit, I'm sorry, I believe it was 35. Let me go back and just double check my numbers here. Yes, 17 and a half, 17 and a half. So there was 35 pieces of fruit produced. when there was no specialization. So we've had gains. That's what we're looking for, right? In other words, there's five additional fruit. Again, I apologize for my messy writing, that are gained when these countries specialize in trade, right? And that's what we're looking for. And that's all we're saying with trade, is that with specialization in trade, when you can identify comparative advantage, more goods and services will be produced overall than what would be produced if there was no specialization in trade. So that's exactly what we see here. In other words, we did have gains. There's five additional pieces of fruit that are produced when these countries specialize. Now this is where we have to negotiate and figure out how that additional five pieces of fruit are going to be divvied up between Canada and Mexico. And so here's the key. You just have to be made better off than what you would be without specialization in trade. And this is where those uh, numbers come into play in terms of those trade ratios. So we already said if Mexico is going to specialize in apple production, we look and see the difference in terms of production. For every one apple they produce, they could have produced two-fifths of an orange, which means if they're going to trade apples for oranges, they have to get more than two-fifths of an orange for every apple that they trade with Canada. And then we can look at the data for Canada and see if, if Canada is only going to produce oranges, we see their opportunity cost for every one orange they produce is one and one thirds of an apple, which means for every orange that they trade with Mexico, they need to get more, in other words, they need, they need more than one and one third of an apple. Otherwise, they're not trade. If there's no gains from trade, then the trade won't occur. 